So this is an example from chapter 3. This is an exercise, exercise 3.50. The purpose of this example is to sh demonstrate the working of mesh analysis. More specifically, the reason I chose this example is to demonstrate the use of a super mesh. So the idea behind the super mesh will become clear to you once we work this example out. So rem remind, remember that the purpose of mesh analysis is to solve for currents. So that's what we're going to solve for and so we're going to find out currents in the network and we go about doing we go about doing that by uh, looking at the meshes there's three meshes that immediately can be identified here so i'm going to redraw the circuit with the with those meshes identified so that i have more room so here's my first mesh so I'm going to identify the mesh current here. I call that I1. And then I have my second mesh with a voltage source and a dependent current source. And I'm going to identify this as I2 and my third mesh and I'm going to identify this as having a mesh current of I3 so I'm going to go ahead and put the resistances down but I'm not going to put the units on them I will put the units on the voltages though just to keep keep things consistent so now I have uh, identify the meshes so a super mesh then so we have three meshes here a super mesh is defined as one that a that arises from the combination of two meshes that have a current source in common so is formed by combining two meshes that have a current source in common. So anytime we have a mesh of some kind and another mesh, so if there is a could be a dependent or it could be independent current source between two meshes we say that we have a super mesh and we identify this super mesh in this case our super mesh is as this entire mesh. Now the purpose of using a super mesh is to eliminate the consideration of the, the common current source. Uh, if you recall we did the same thing when we did a super node. The purpose of a super node is to ignore a voltage source and write KCL equations for a node, a super node. So the 
point here then is a super mesh allows you to ignore the current source and write KVL equations or more specifically mesh equations for the various meshes including a super mesh. So my first expression then so I'm going to say uh, for loop 1 with current I1 the expression the KCL expression is going to be 4 times I1 plus 2 times I1 minus I3 because the current through this is I1 flowing this way I3 is flowing up so that's I1 minus I3 plus 10 times I1 minus I2 again that's I1 flowing this way I2 flowing the other way as I indicated this is equal to 0 I can rewrite this as 16 I1 because this is 4 plus 2 plus 10 minus 10 I2 plus minus 2 I3 equals 0. So this is my first equation. My next equation for the second loop then which is the super mesh for super mesh which is basically I2 I3 the meshes that are made up of the I2 mesh current and I3 mesh current we can write our expression as minus 60 so I'm going to start from here and I do this so minus 60 plus 10 times I2 minus I1 plus so I, I follow this path plus 2 times I2 minus I1 now oh. I'm sorry. That's two times I three, which is flowing this way, minus I one plus. 8 times I 3 equals 0 so this expression then gives me a minus 2 I 1 plus 10 and minus 10 I1 so that's minus 12 I1 and plus 10 I2 which is just that term plus 8 I3 equals 60 or I can write this as minus 6 I1 plus 5 I2 plus 4 I3 equals 30 actually that's not 8 I3 that's 8 I3 plus 2 I3 that makes it 10 I3 and so that's 
5 i3 i3 equals 30 so this is my second equation we can also write expressions for what i naught is now i can say 3 i naught is the current through this which is nothing but i2 flowing it's the i3 flowing this way minus i2 flowing that way so that's going to be i3 minus i And we can also say that I naught, which is being given to us as this current here, is nothing but I one. So when I combine these two, this tells me that three I one equals I. 3 minus i2 or minus 3 i1 or I can even say plus 3 i1 plus i2 minus i3 equals 0. That's my third equation. Now I know that this can be solved because I have three equations three unknowns i1 i2 i3 and I have three equations so I can solve this by writing my matrix equation which says a is it's 16 in fact I could even reduce this further I can divide all of them by so that will be 8 minus 5 minus 1 minus 6 5 5 and I have 3 1 minus 1 and my B is the array 0 that comes from there 30 and 0 so my I1 I2 I3 array is nothing but A inverse times B which if I plug this into MATLAB I get this to be the value of I1 value of 1.731 and I don't really care about the others for now because all I'm being asked to find out is what I1 is which is what I0 is so my answer then is I1 equals 1.731 which is also what I0 is and that's